Hi there, this is Alex from Thinsboard. Today we talk about role-based access control. This feature appeared in 2.3 version of Professional Edition and it gives you more flexibility and capabilities in your security configuration. To have full understanding of Thinsboard role-based access control we'll cover multi-tenancy and entity groups, what's that and what for, core principles of security model in Thinsboard and differences between Thinsboard community and professional edition security, types of role Thinsboard supports and how they help you configure a multi-level customer hierarchies. Also, in this tutorial I'll provide use cases that you can immediately implement for your IoT solutions and will show you an example of end-to-end -end interactive smart building case with a role-based access control possibilities. Multi-tenancy is a great feature and it's common for all things board editions. Single instance of the platform support multiple tenants. In practice, tenant is a separate business entity individual or organization who owns devices and assets. Tenant may have multiple tenant administrator users and millions of customers. Tenants allow to manage Thinsboard entities, create customers and assign entities to customers. Single entity has exactly one tenant owner. Now let me explain the differences between community and professional edition security models. In Community Edition there are three predefined authorities. System Administrator manage tenants, while Tenant Administrator manage devices, dashboards, customers and other entities that belong to particular tenant. And the lowest level is Customer User. It can view dashboards and control devices that are assigned to specific customer. This security model is sufficient for a lot of use cases, especially building real-time and user dashboards. However, in some use cases you need more granular control over your users and their permissions. For example, you may need some device supervisor users who manage devices but have no access to dashboards or customers who may design their own dashboards or create their own sub-customers. Now Thingsboard supports all those scenarios using new customer hierarchy and flexible role-based access control. Deep breath and move forward discovering new features. All the configuration I'm going to apply via user interface is also available via REST API. First thing you need to know that Thingsboard Professional Edition supports entity groups. This basically allows you to create group of devices, assets or any other Thingsboard entity. One entity, let's say device, may belong to multiple device groups. By the way, whenever you create an entity, it's automatically added to group all. Users are also entities, so they may be grouped as well. Quick look to default user groups for the tenant. We have for example Tenant Administrators group. Go to Roles tab to see permissions for this kind of entities. You can see the group has a generic role that allows all operations over all resources. Let's create new tenant user Alice and make this user a member of the device administrators group. This user will have limited permissions, provision devices and assign them to customers.
we need to design a desirable role. The one we call device administrators. This generic role will allow all operations for devices and device groups. This means user which had this role can create new devices, create device groups, but still cannot assign devices to customers, because he simply cannot see those customers. I want our device administrators to have basic info about customers, but no access to customer details such as attributes or telemetry. So I'm creating a new generic role called Customer Read Only. This role have read operations for customers and customer group resource. When I assign two or more roles to user group, the permissions are merged or combined, so the user has all permissions from each role. I'm logged in as Alice and I can see only three UI elements – device groups, customer groups and customer hierarchy. Note that I can browse only basic customer details. At the same time, I can change the owner of the device. Now device belongs to customer. This means it will be visible to customer users and customer administrators if they have corresponding permissions. So far we have used only generic roles. This means that set of permissions is applied to all resources of the tenant or all resources of customers and sub-customers. As a device administrator, Alice is not able to see dashboards. But let us allow device administrators to create their own dashboards. With new security system this is also possible. We should use group roles and assign specific group role to specific dashboard group. Let's go to dashboards and create two groups – device administrator dashboards and customer dashboards. Now let's go to roles and create group role with permissions to apply all operations. We call it all operations to group to avoid any confusion. Now let's navigate to our user group and assign this role. So now if I log in as Alice, I can find my device administrator dashboards, where Alice can add her own dashboard. You may notice that Alice doesn't have access to customer dashboards. If something was unclear, please write me that in comments. Now you are aware of basic role-based access control functionality, let's improve your knowledge and review few more use cases. I want to design one dashboard available for multiple customers, but each of them should see only their devices. We have two customers, A and B. Each customer has customer user A and B respectively, and a pair of devices A1, A2, B1, B2 with device type Smart Meter. Currently, I logged in as a tenant administrator. Any dashboard I create will be visible only for me or other tenant administrators. I have a dashboard group Device Dashboards with a list of devices. I use device type alias with type smart meter so I can see A1, A2 and B1, B2 things. To give my customer success to dashboard, let's create group specific role with read permissions and allow all users from customer A and all users from customer B to read this dashboard group by specifying a resource.
Now my users see only their devices. Similar to previous use case, tenant can create device and make it available to both customer users. I am adding this device to new group called Share Devices. And modify the same read group rule. Simply add device group resource. Now both customers may see extra device in their list. However, customers will not be able to manipulate the device or delete it. Please know that if you share the device with the customer, customer will see all telemetry data history. To share only some periods of data, use entity views. We'll cover usage of entity views in a separate video tutorial. Tenant administrator may also share entity groups that belong to one customer with another customer. Similar, customer administrator may share entity groups that belong to one subcustomer with another subcustomer. In this case, one customer will remain a shared group owner and will be able to add entities to the group. The other customer will be able to read or edit entities but will not be able to add or remove devices from the group. Let's assume you'd like to create a user account that can browse all the settings in your solution but can edit anything, even its login and password. For this purpose, create a spectator role with all resources and read operations and grant it to your tenant user from spectator's user group. Next use case is simplifying and accelerating cooperation between device manufacturers and distributors. Let's assume you produce thousands of devices and now want multiple distributors sell them as soon as possible. To make it faster, a distributor should be a magician or you may use the import professional edition to make it magic. In this case, you are a tenant. Your distributors are customers and their clients are sub-customers. Let's assume you have provisioned device X. Now we'll change the ownership of our tenant device and make it available to our distributor. Now, if we log in as a distributor administrator, we can see that he has a lot of things, both features enabled and can create his own clients or sub-customers in things board terminology.
try create a client account and change owner of the device to this client. Of course, based on template dashboards use case we showed earlier, you can create multiple clients and assign multiple devices to them. As a distributor administrator, you can also create multiple template dashboards and assign them to your clients. It's up to you to decide whether you want to give your clients ability to create their own dashboards or not. You can also assign your team member to design dashboards for them and make them sub-custom administrators. Our final use case in this video is a smart building solution that supports multiple user roles. As a tenant administrator, you are able to provision building management companies. Each company has sub-customers, which are building centers. Each building center may have multiple buildings. On each of those customers' hierarchy levels, you can define your own users. We've defined following user groups and roles. Facility managers that control corresponding buildings and cannot access other subcustomers' data. Office workers that can have read-only access to their facility data. Support team that is able to see all devices but can't see any dashboards except their own. And finally spectator user that is read-only tenant user. You can use the following info to log in as a spectator and see how the dashboards, rule chains and customer hierarchies are configured. I've duplicated this info to the video description as well. Access to spectator user will help you to create similar solutions for your use cases. Do you want to know how to provision smart building use case and any outstanding dashboards in your ThingsBot instance? Subscribe to our YouTube channel and may the things board with you!